Spirit. Amen. In the Orthodox Church, of course, we have this theological principle about synergy. God does not force His will on us. He will certainly make it abundantly known, and sometimes very strongly known. But he doesn't force us to do His will. He gives us free will to choose, but He wants us to choose to follow that will. And He does not really work in us until we open ourselves up to that will. In the Gospel today, they've been out here laboring. These people are following them for days, and with great compassion, the Lord sees these people are hungry. And the apostles themselves see that they are hungry and have compassion upon them. And they said, Lord, send them away. They're going to be very hungry out here. We have nothing to eat. We only have five loaves and two small fishes. And what does he say to them? You give them something to eat. Yes, he does work the miracle. But he wants them to participate in this. He wants them to have faith. He wants his ministry to work through human hands. He wants us to give them something to eat. He wants us to work in the lives of others. In the, lives, in the life of the holy hierarch Gregory the Dialogist, or Gregory the Great as they call him in the West, before he was the Pope of Rome, a pre Pope of Rome, of course, one of our saints, he was an abbot of a monastery, and one day as he was doing his work, he went about doing his calligraphy and writing, a beggar comes and says, I've fallen into hard times, I've lost everything, please give me something, and he gives him some money at that time period. A little while later, the same beggar comes back. It sounds similar to the story of John the Almsgiver, but it is different. He comes back later and he says, I've really fallen on hard times, I've lost everything, please give me something. He, gives, he instructs his disciple to give him the same amount. Well, not much time passes before the same man comes, it says, I've really fallen into difficult times. I've lost everything. Please give me something. St. Gregory instructs his disciple, go give him some more. He says, Master, we have nothing else left. There is no more money. Give him food. Give him clothes. We have no more clothes to give. We have nothing to give him. All we have is this plate with this pulse on it that your mother gave us, a silver plate. Give him the silver plate. So they took the silver plate. And they've given away everything that they possibly have. Well, not long after this, St. Gregory is elected as the, the patriarch, the bishop of Rome. And as was the custom of the time, he invited 12 people to dinner with him. Well, at this meal, St. Gregory sees 13 people. And it troubles him. So he asked his disciple, why did you invite this 13th person? I told you to invite 12. He couldn't see this other person. Only Gregory was seeing this person. Now throughout the course of the meal, Gregory watched this man, and his appearance changed. Sometimes he looked old. Sometimes he looked young. Clothing looked different. At the end of it, he finally grabs the man by the hand and takes him aside and asks, who are you? Why are you here? And he said, I'm an angel of the Lord who has been sent to you. I knew that you would be patriarch. The Lord sent me to you a while back to test you, to see if your love was truly for man or was it for display. And because your love was truly for mankind and you desired to do for others, you were made the bishop. Gregory wept, of course, and knelt and thought to himself, if so much grace and so much mercy comes from giving a few coins and a little plate, how much more mercy and grace must come in the kingdom of heaven to those who keep God's commandments, and truly keep his commandments. Now Gregory didn't just wait for the Lord to act in his life. He was told by the Lord, you give them something to eat, and he did so. We see the, this throughout the lives of the saints, the stories of John the Almsgiver constantly giving everything to the, the merciful, to where they had nothing left, his last oxen, his last cow, his last horse, his last donkey, and he was furious with it. He would give away everything. Of course, he became a relative of the emperor after doing all this. He continued to give away everything. A great example for us. But in our lives, we have things that need to be accomplished. It might not be necessarily the beggar coming to us, 
We keep waiting for God to work His mercy. I've been orthodox all this time, and yet I'm not changing. And the Lord's saying, you do it. I showed you what to do. I've told you what to do. I've given you the grace to do it. But I can't say your prayers for you. I can't keep the fast for you. I'm not going to read the scriptures for you. I'm going to give the beggar I'm food for you. I'm telling you to do it. I gave you the stuff to give to the beggar. I gave you the beggar. He gives us everything we need, but we do have to take action in our lives. It is the same with the church. We must have faith that these men were taught to have. And remember these men, as John Chrysostom says, were dumber than fish. It doesn't mean they were stupid. They didn't know how to speak. They didn't understand what was going on around them. I laughed when I read that line the first time, too. But he uses it more than once. But they didn't know what to do. And you see this at the end of this passage. We've been reading it in our class, and they're, they don't seem very bright. Of course, they didn't have the gift of the Holy Spirit that we do. They did gain that gift later, of course, went out to the entire universe. These men that were, quote, dumber than fish, preached to the whole world and converted kings and poor everyone with the gift of the Holy Spirit. But they still didn't quite get it. Later on, they're feeding 4,000. How can we feed them, Lord? After they just heard and saw how it was done, he's again going to tell them, you give them to me. And the Lord, when you give of yourself like that, doesn't leave you without anything. What's he give them? He gives them 12 baskets full. They got abundantly more than they gave. So when we give our lives and our spiritual life to others around us, to the poor, as John Chrysostom says very poignantly, if you cannot see Christ in that beggar at the back door of the church, you will never see him in the chalice. It's the same for everybody that is around us. The person that we hate the most, the person that we don't like in this church the most, might be me. If you can't see Christ in me, you're not going to see him in the chalice. If I can't see Christ in you, woe to me. So we must live for Christ in all places. And he multiplies the gifts that he gives us and gives us abundant grace. It is the same with giving tithes to the church. This is not a tithing sermon, by the way. It is the same as that. If we don't trust God with our 10%, how can we expect to receive anything in return? If we don't trust God to build this church that we're afraid to build, which the ever-memorable Archbishop Dimitri told us to build, which will not exist in years if we don't do that, how can we expect him to give us an abundance if we don't show faith to do that? And we've been instructed to do so. He tells us to build it, not the people after us. Us. And giving that tithe, remember, Ananias and Sapphira were struck dead for not giving everything they had to the feet of the apostles. And the Lord just asked for 10%. These people were giving everything they had. So in the building of the church, we must have trust. We must have faith to give. I don't have to tell anyone you're giving. No way you're giving. Just give it somewhere. Go to church. To the poor. To St. Mary's would be nice because we need it to do the things we need to do. To reach out more than we've ever done. We need that to open the doors to the world. Right now, a small little group of people in a city of almost six million people. And we have the true faith. If we have seen the true light, the true light must be taken out from under a bushel and shown to the world. So as Gregory the Dialogist, we too, when someone comes to us, when the church asks, when people ask, when anything comes in front of us, we must, he's going to, the Lord's going to say, you do it. I will help you, certainly, if we can all of the work, really. He's given us that talent as well. But we must show a will, a desire to follow Christ. So remember that example of St. Gregory and of all these saints. All these saints did this. Show that ultimate trust and give what you have. Some of us here are very poor, but I've known some very poor people in my life that gave well more than 10%. And somehow God still fed them. And God still kept them in a house. Why? Because they had trust. They trusted that God could multiply the loaves and multiply the fish and give a basket to each one of the apostles, including Judas. He gives an abundance to those who open their hearts to him. Amen. Amen.